Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 578. The 15 Reasons You Have Trouble Losing Weight. Numbers 8 through 15. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. We started out last week with the first seven reasons, uh, and if you haven't watched that, you should start with that, because there are many very vital reasons that people can't lose weight listed and discussed in my last health cast. But today we're going to start off with one of the reasons people can't lose weight when they're in my office and I'm going over their lifestyle. And we go over what they eat, what they drink, how they live, when they exercise, all of those things, because I'm trying to get them healthy. It, is, it doesn't do a thing for me to tell a patient or you that these certain things are ways to lose weight unless you actually do them. So listening and only listening to the reasons people can't lose weight and what to do about it isn't going to help you unless you actually follow through. So I'm going to challenge you to follow through and limit what you eat on Christmas and limit what you eat on holidays and actually think about what you're eating instead of just mindlessly shoveling food into your mouth. Remember, holidays are for getting together with our friends and family. They were not meant to make us gain 10 pounds and then have to lose it in January. So please hear me so that you don't have that problem in January and have to have to really work hard to lose weight. You'll have less to lose if you listen now. So number eight, when it comes to losing weight is, you can't lose weight because you continue to drink alcohol during the time you're trying to get down to ideal weight. So alcohol is a toxin, it is not a food, and it is generally mixed with something that is a carb. So those two things together are deadly. they w- deadly to weight loss. Basically, um, alcohol is going to go to your liver and shut down the process of getting rid of fat out of your body. It is going to prioritize the alcohol to get that out of your body first because it's a toxin. Then adding carbohydrate to that makes whatever you did all day, if you're drinking at night, makes whatever you did all day just nothing because you're going to put the sugar through the liver, and you're going to make fat out of it. This is not the way to lose weight. If you are going to be dedicated to getting to a certain size and a certain weight, then you should stop drinking alcohol during that time. It's not hard. You can drink water. You did it when you were pregnant. You can can drink any, you can drink tea, anything without sugar in it. Bubble water even with a lime in it is okay. But you don't have to not go out on social Uh, occasions, you just don't have to drink. You can be the driver. So if you are really trying to lose weight, you you will speed up the process and actually make it possible if you stop drinking alcohol during that time. And that means wine too. Because everybody says, oh yeah, I just have a glass of wine. Well, their glass of wine is like that tall, like eight, 10 ounce glasses of wine. When somebody says, have you had a glass of wine? They mean four ounces, not eight. So you're really drinking two and a half glasses of wine if you're drinking 10 ounces. So that's not a, um, it's not an excuse and it's not a good option. So if you're going to be on a diet, stop drinking. Number nine is you aren't losing weight because you don't drink water. We are almost all water. If you look at my body composition uh, machine in body, It tells you how many pounds of your body is water, and it's like half usually, unless you have a lot of fat. So fat doesn't have water in it like protein and the rest of your your, um, organs do. So if you don't drink water, 
or if you just drink coffee, tea, soda, diet soda, then your body can't get rid of any kind of fat that you are actually mobilizing when you're dieting and exercising. So you may diet and exercise, and you did great that day, but you didn't drink water, so it's just going to stay in your body. It can't get out. You have to have water to make that happen, and you have to have water to save your kidneys. If you're not drinking 10 8 ounces glasses of water a day, then your kidneys are not happy, and eventually they're not going to work. So I can't imagine anything worse being on a dialysis just because I didn't drink water. So it's much more than just weight loss. Drinking water is something that should be your habit. You should drink it all the time. You should have a, a bottle of water with you at all times. And especially, especially if you're exercising, you need water while you're exercising because you are losing uh, water with your sweating. Sometimes you'll even need electrolytes if you're exercising for long periods of time. So water is a must-have. Number 10, you aren't losing weight because some of the medicines you are taking are, are causing you to gain weight or not lose weight. Unfortunately, when doctors give you medications, we're thinking about, in general, they, not me, but most general physicians are thinking about treating you for something and trying to make you better. They're not thinking about, oh, what are the side effects of that medicine and am I making this patient gain more weight? So you have to actually bring that up to them when you look at your medication list. Some people take a lot of medications and they have to. It's, it's not a choice. I have patients come in and go, well, I just don't like medicine. Who does? There's nobody who likes taking medicine. You take medicine because you have to. But within the realm of medicines that treat a certain thing, sometimes you can adjust those medicines so that they're a medicine that doesn't cause weight gain or doesn't prevent weight loss. So if you are on antipsychotics, sometimes they use those for sleep, believe it or not, uh, if you're on anti-seizure medicines, if you're on oral estrogen or birth control pills, uh, postmenopausal oral hormones, not, not pellets, but oral hormones, especially Provera, then maybe you can go to your doctor when you see your doctor say, I'd like to have an alternative that doesn't make me gain weight. If you are on birth control pills, you get can get a Mirena IUD. If you are on oral um, menopausal medications, you can, of course, get pellets like what I do, or you can get a patch, or you can get a NuvaRing. You can have something that is not oral, which will not cause you to gain weight. If you're on an antipsychotic, maybe you just need to be on a sleep medicine instead of the antipsychotic, which is causing you to gain weight. So there are alternatives. You just have to specifically ask your doctor to look at the medicines you're on and see if he or she can change them to drugs that don't cause you to gain weight and to prevent you from losing weight. So it's very important that you communicate with the doctor that wrote the prescription about these alternatives. If they don't have alternatives or they don't want to listen to you, then you're in the, with the wrong doctor. So that was number 10, your medications. Now, your number 11 is you eat because you're bored or you're anxious or you just have to do something with your hands. Well, this is a common problem especially with night eating. People want to sit and watch a movie, but they don't want to just sit. They've got nervous energy. So what I suggest to you folks that have this is that you do something with your hands. You can do Sudoku while you're watching television. You can do a crossword puzzle while you're watching television. Or if you want to do something creative, you can do petty point or, uh, or cross stitch. Um, you can do your nails because when your nails are done, you can't eat because you're waiting for them to dry. Um, you can knit. You can do something with your hands that doesn't take your whole brain, that makes you able to still watch television or a movie, and not get up and eat things you shouldn't eat. If the worst comes to worst, and you have to have something to eat, then eat something in a shell, like a pistachio. You use as many calories opening up the pistachio shell and then eating the pistachio as you do eating the pistachio itself. So make it harder for you. Make peanuts. Crack the peanuts open, you know, and make it something that takes time and you use your hands so that you don't have nervous energy making you, your brain think it needs to eat. That's mind, mindless eating. You don't even remember what you ate. You don't, I mean, I know patients eat at night. 
I know they do. They, especially if they're not losing weight, when I've got them on a program, and I'm like, what do you eat? And they don't remember. They don't know. Well, I'm sure that if we had a camera on them that we would find out that they were eating at night. So, or eating after dinner is, is and, and that's particularly bad because then you're going to bed and you're not gonna burn any of the calories. So, um, that is basically number 11 and you can control that. Um, number 12 is you're not losing weight because your gut bacteria is unhealthy. So we do a lot of things to our intestines that make our, uh, all the bacteria in our intestines either die or become abnormal. So you have the people who are healthy have lots of different kinds of bacteria in their intestines, and those bacteria help you absorb nutrients. They help you make neurotransmitters so you're not depressed. They help you um, get the stool out of, your, out of your system. They actually help you be healthier. So they, they actually help the gut be healthier and not leak. Leaky gut is something that people have um, that give them autoimmune diseases. So for, for somebody who has um, obesity, if we check their gut bacteria, they generally have only a few types of bacteria. They don't have a thousand types. So that is not healthy. And usually the bacteria they have are bacteria that hurt them and don't help them. So when you're trying to lose weight, I tell everybody to be on a probiotic. A probiotic is uh, actually feeds and gives you more bacteria in your intestine that will actually help you uh, absorb your foods and help you lose weight. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're not on a probiotic, you need to be on a probiotic. And then eat a salad every day to feed your bacteria in your intestines. It will make it much easier for you to lose weight. It, it just... It's kind of a miraculous new finding. And that it's, it's something that you can take as a pill that will ease your way. It doesn't take place of diet and exercise and all the other things I told you, but it will make it easier for you to lose weight. Um, let me just, okay, here we go. Number 13, you don't like taking vitamins and supplements. Once again, who does? I mean, it's a hassle. You have to make sure you have enough. You have to make sure you put them in your little box so that you can take them for the next week or two. Um, it's, it's another thing to do. But if you are eating a normal American diet, you are not getting the nutrition that you need. And even if you eat really well, an apple in 1959 when I was five is not the same as an apple now. They don't have the same nutrition because of how we farm, and we've used up all the minerals and, and good stuff in our land. So even though we try to keep the land fertile, we have used a lot of, a lot of the uh, trace minerals and that type of thing that give us the value in our food. So eating fresh is good, and eating fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, but you still have to take vitamins. And vitamins and minerals are necessary for being healthy and for losing weight. So some of the vitamins that I suggest to my patients who want to lose weight, uh, in fact, to everybody. So I live in the Midwest. If you don't live in Florida or uh, Southern Arizona or Southern California, you probably don't get enough sun. So you should be taking 5,000 units of vitamin D3 every single day. So that's a given for everybody. Um, I suggest, I, or I recommend magnesium because we get plenty of calcium, but you have to have enough magnesium to balance it for your muscles and for your intestines. So you have to take 400 milligrams of uh, magnesium glycinate to 800 milligrams a day. So that will help balance the calcium that's already in your diet from, um, from milk products and uh, other things. They put calcium in other things to fortify it. So we have to balance it with magnesium. Uh, methylated B complex is a good recommendation. Most of us need methylated B vitamins. So I recommend a methylated B complex, especially methylated B12 and methylated um, folate. The probiotic. Vitamin E is 400 units, not more uh, a day, milli international units. Vitamin A, 25,000 units. And zinc, 15 micrograms. 
Those are the things I recommend to everybody because nobody's taking eating enough nutrient to get those nutrients in their food. Um, if you're dieting, you should also add DIM, diendol methane is what it's really called, and it comes in extra strength, 250 to 500 milligrams. You should take that every day. You should take some chromium, chromium protein powder uh, that has 25 grams per scoop, one to two times a day, berberine for your blood sugar, and vitamin K, 100 micrograms per day, unless you're on a blood thinner. That's the only reason you wouldn't take that. So those are necessary for weight loss and necessary for you to be healthy. If you don't like to take vitamins, then you're not trying very hard. You just have to suck it up. And if you don't like them, put them in, in your blender with your protein powder and water and just blend them up and take them. I mean, you don't like to swallow pills? That's the easy way to do it. Last but not least, and the longest subject today, is you don't plan your meals. You're gaining weight because you don't plan your meals or shopping list. You just buy food that looks good when you go to the grocery store. And then you eat that food that week. Weight loss takes energy, planning, uh, being healthy takes energy and planning. It takes scheduling. You need to sit down and write a list of the things that you're going to make the next week, whoever is the, whoever is the chef in the house, and what you're going to buy for that that will save you money and, and money on junk that you shouldn't be eating. You should work your way around the outside of the grocery store, which is mostly fresh food and dairy, and stay away from the inside, which is mostly canned food and um, soda and alcohol and all of the things that we've told you are not healthy while you're trying to lose weight are not healthy anyway. Um, shopping for food should be a stealth type of, uh, of an activity, not a um, dirty bomb where you just go, oh, yeah, I'm drinking, you know, and act like a two-year-old who's just pulling things off, off the shelves. I mean, you're an adult. You can manage your own diet. You can manage what you're going to eat. You need to pull off the shelves, things that are going to make you healthier. It's fuel. It's like putting water in your gas tank when you pick up um, some a sugary cereal and cookies and candy. And I mean, just you're putting the wrong thing in your car and your car won't run and you won't run either. So if you feel tired and exhausted and you feel like you're gaining weight and swollen and bloated, that's your own problem because you just ate all that stuff. So clean out your clean out your um, clean out your pantry, your cupboard, wherever you keep your dry foods and your refrigerator. Uh, use a list to plan your meal prep. No cereal, no oatmeal, no chips, no dip. Uh, crackers should be a whole grain if you buy crackers to eat with your cheese. No rice. Rice is the worst grain. It has the highest glycemic index and it causes diabetes. In most people who eat a lot of rice, you can eat wild rice, but not brown or white rice. Buy fresh foods for salads that you can make every day. You can cut them up on, you can cut up salad stuff on, on um, Sunday, put it into little, uh, little um, containers, and then make your salad, salads every night out of those containers for a week. They stay really well that way. Bread should be high-protein bread, and you should should not eat more than one slice of bread at a meal. And say, say Dave's bread. Dave's is, is a very nutritious and high-protein bread. Um, make multi-meal soups, stews, things like that. That is usually a very healthy way to eat as long as you don't eat a loaf of bread with it. So those are really healthy ways to get what you need. They're cooked vegetables, true, but they, they are cooked in their own juices, so that helps. Um, don't buy soda. Don't buy diet soda. D buy bubble water at the store. That's the, that's, that should take the place of it over time. Um, leave baked goods at the store. Leave sweets alone. If you're using a dressing on your salad, it's best to use a milk-based dressing because milk-based dressings don't have sugar added in general. If you get a French dressing or a vinegar and oil, they dump sugar into that, so you eat a lot of it. So try to get a milk-based dressing, a blue cheese or a ranch dressing, 
that would be the best, or just use oil and vinegar, just plain oil and balsamic vinegar. Have nuts out and dried food at fruit, excuse me, dried fruit out for snacks, not don't have candy out. Take get rid of your candy dishes. Um, you can snack on nuts, cheese, yogurt, dried fruit, fresh fruit, have them available for snacks. Eat a lot of cheeses, butter, ricotta, cottage cheese, um, blue cheese, feta cheese, eggs are good for you. All of those are very high in protein and low in carbohydrate, and they fill you up. Fat's not a bad thing. I, yes, they have fat in them, but you're not going to be able to eat a lot of them because they fill you up fairly, fairly quickly. If you eat them with a carb, you're going to eat way too much because the carb makes you feel hungry. Um, get rid of junk food in your pantry. Clean it out. Donate it. Do something with it, but you know, give it to the birds, but don't buy it again. And if your kids are at home, it's not an excuse for you eating their food. And I don't think you should train them to eat junk food because they'll eat junk food when they're, uh, when they're grown up and then they'll be obese. So that is, that's not a good excuse. I've heard it a million times. Um, if you have to have some food for them, like animal crackers or whatever, if they're toddlers, then put it in a different drawer or a different uh, cabinet that you do not go in. That is not your cabinet. That's your grandchild's cabinet or your daughter's cabinet, but not yours. So you have to just, in your mind, say, that's not for me. I don't eat that. Um, and then my last, my last, why you're not eating, why you're not um, losing weight is that you're not eating right for your blood type. Your blood type is more than blood type for transfusions. It is a, it actually is a way of looking at somebody's metabolism. So A's and AB's are different than B's and O's. We're all different, and we have different specific foods that are really good for us and different foods that are really not good for us. So um, the, uh, Dr. Dadamo and his father were the first investigators into this. They've been doing this longer than 20 years. And they, the latest book is Live Right for Your Type, and it tells you what is a good food and what is a bad food for your blood type. And if you follow that, that helps you from eating foods that seem... Um, innocent, but for you, they make you gain weight or they make you sick. So that book will help you with choosing foods, not just based on whether it's a carb, fat, or a protein, but choosing foods that are um, healthy for you and make you healthier as you eat them. That's one of the things I check and uh, give to my patients is their blood type diet when they come in for their first visit. So, none of this is easy. I know that. And you don't have to try all of it all at once. But you do have to do more than one thing to lose weight. You're going to have to exercise, eat properly, and you're going to have to give up your alcohol, drink lots of water, and all of these other things you can add on as you go as you start losing weight. If you're over 40, then you're going to need testosterone replacement if you're a female. If you're over 50, you're going to need it if you're a male. So... In general, that's a generalization, but um, those are that's the hormone that you need to actually have a lean, muscly body and not have a lot of fat. So if you want to be healthy, not have diabetes, and not be in the doctor's office all the time the rest of your life, which is what being overweight causes, then you need to do these things and have the courage to do them and the courage to say no to certain foods. And we will be back next week with more advice. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.